Today on Ham Radio Q&A, what do you need to know to become a net control operator? Well, keep watching to find out. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, one big aspect of amateur radio is to provide a public service. The FCC acknowledges that, and in the first paragraph of the Part 97 rules, they say, recognition and enhancement of the value of the amateur radio service to the public as a voluntary non-commercial com non communication service. Plus, in the following paragraph, they also include the words, expansion of the existing reservoir within the amateur radio service of trained operators, technicians, and electronics experts. Well, a great way to provide a public service and maintain your skill as an operator is to be a net control station. Being net control is rewarding, and it's not overly difficult. And the easiest and most accessible form of net control operation is to volunteer for your local net on a VHF repeater. Most repeaters sponsored by an amateur radio club or other organization usually will have a weekly swap or a fun net. You know, these nets are a little more relaxed than the traffic nets you'll find on HF or the severe weather nets that storm spotters may be involved in. But they are an important nonetheless, and I encourage anyone wanting to be more active with their local amateur radio community to be involved with the net control for a local net. Net on. Link on. So what does it take to be a net control station? Really not much, although there are some items that can make the net control experience a lot easier. So I'll go through the base equipment you'll need and some tips and tricks to make the, your life a lot easier. First off, the equipment. Although you can use an HT to run a net, I don't recommend generally using a handheld radio. Now I'm going to admit that um, my first ever net that I, I ran as net control, I did it on a handheld radio. You know, it did the job. Uh, but when you're running a net, you know, you're giving your radio a bit of a workout. So your handheld is going to get quite warm very fast. And then really, who knows how long your battery is going to last. Plus, unless you have a speaker mic, you know, a handheld is going to be pretty inconvenient to hold while you're trying to write down information. So really, for really um, convenience sake, you're going to want a mobile or a base radio. Now your base radio can be as simple as a 2 meter uh, VHF radio or something more sophisticated like a dual band model. Uh, the advantages of going with a base station route is that you know you get a nice loudspeaker, that handheld microphone, uh, multiple power levels, and of course an external antenna. You know the brand and type of radio really doesn't matter. As a net control you are in charge so you're going to want a clean strong signal and you're going to and be able to hear everyone. You don't need to be a super station, you know, just a radio capable of transmitting a clean signal and a good external antenna will do. Uh, most VHF nets, unless you're running in simplex, you know, the repeater is going to be doing all of the work for you. So, you know, if you can hear the repeater well and you can get a strong signal to it, you're well on your way of being net control operator. Good evening, this is KB9VBR. My name is Michael. I'll be tonight's net control operator. Welcome to the WVRA Wednesday night net of the 147.135 and 146.865 repeater system. This is a weekly net providing a meeting place for amateur radio operators interested in buying, selling, or trading amateur radio equipment related items. In addition, questions, comments, or discussion regarding the technical aspects of amateur radio are also welcomed and encouraged. Following check-ins and announcements, we will have the ARRL Audio News. Next up, you're going to need some instructions, and that will be in the form of a net control script. All good nets are run from a script. Scripts are important because they provide predictability to the other stations, and the script will assure you that you don't miss a part. Uh, the biggest hurdle in any potential net control operator isn't their station. You know, trust me, your setup is going to be fine. But it's in not knowing what to say or do on the net. Well, the answer to that is easy. Just follow the script and all will be good. Oh, now accept check-ins for the net. Please call KB9VBR. KB9VBR. This is KD9FLD. No traffic. KB9VBR. 
So as long as you go through the script, stations will check into the net and you'll need to record that information. I like to use a steno notebook to log the stations checking into the net. You know, these work really well for me as, um, you know, they got the spiral binding on the top, so they're easy to write down. They have a stiff cover, so, you know, and a nice convenient size. Of course, you know, you can use whatever works best for you. You know, like a notebook, a scrap paper, you know, maybe an ICS 309 form or a spreadsheet. Well, but you know, I've used and I've used all of those forms, even spreadsheets on a computer. But you know, I usually you know gravitate back to the paper route. You know, it just seems to work best for me. And that's pretty much it. You know, there are a couple other odds and ends that you might also want, uh, like spare pens and pencils. Uh, I've had those go out on me. You know, maybe a beverage. I keep some water handy for a long net, and anything else that will make your net control experience yeah, more pleasurable. So here's some tips that I've learned over the years of running nets. You know, these are little things that work well for me, so you can feel free to use them and adapt your own style. First off, have your supplies handy. Have your log, pens, or pencils at the ready so you aren't scrambling during the net. Also, if there's any other materials like um, important dates or other information, you know, pull those up on a, on a computer screen or have that information handy so you're not searching around looking for that um, piece of information that's relevant for the net. Um, just to recap, the Wisconsin Valley Radio Association will have a VE testing session Saturday, October 26th. That'll be at the State Patrol headquarters in Wausau. I believe the, I don't have the exact time on here in front of me, but I believe that's at gonna be at um, probably two o'clock p.m. Uh, stand by, I'll look it up quick. Be ready to start on time. Ham radio operators are an impatient lot. And you know, if you wait more than one minute uh, past the starting time of the net, all of a sudden you're gonna start hearing kerchunking to verify that the repeater is working or not. Third, you know, don't worry if you can't copy all the call signs. An experienced net control operator makes it look effortless as they copy call signs. And as, as you do a net for a few times, you know, you're going to recognize people by voice and um, be able to copy their call regardless of the conditions. And my recommendation is to increase proficiency, is to practice logging, you know, station check-ins when you aren't the net control. Do that for a couple of times and you'll be ready to run the net yourself. Another tip, you know, if you're having um, trouble copying call signs, is to maybe maintain a list of frequent callers. Then you have a reference to look up the call, you know, if the transmission's kind of weak or garbled. Next up, you know, one trick I like to do is to welcome every checked in station by name. You know, with practice, uh, you'll know the names of all of the, the regulars that participate. All checking in with no traffic is uh, KD9FLD Chris, uh, good evening to you. WS9E Joe, uh, another good evening. And Bob, WB9RND, uh, good evening to you. Do we have any other stations wishing to check in, either with or without traffic? Please call now at uh, KB9VBR. But I also keep a browser window open on my computer screen so that I can quickly um, enter in the call sign and, of an unrecognized person, on your call and um, come back to them with their name. You know, this isn't necessary, but I think it makes for a more uh, friendly net. And finally, you know, every net has a net manager. They are the person that coordinates the net control operators and makes sure everything runs in an orderly fashion. When you're ready to take on the net, you know, give the net manager a call and uh, sign up for a spot on the, net, on the rotation. I assure you, you're gonna love it. Do you have any tips for an expiring net control station? Or do you want to run a net and still have questions? Well, please leave them in the comments below. You know, I'll filter through them and keep the conversation going. You know, maybe one will even show up in the next Your Questions Answered video. And for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. You know, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. So if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. And also, you know, if you've been watching this long, why don't you just hit that subscribe button and then the little bell notification that goes along with it. Pressing subscribe and the bell icon is your best way to be notified when future videos are released. 
Well, I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. Have a great day and 73.